Hello, hello everybody. It's your old pal Tuna here, back for another video. If it is your first time here on the channel, hello, my name is Tuna. I'm an illustrator and comic artist from Canada, and I have over a decade of experience in making my own merchandise for my illustrator brand. Here on the channel, I make all kinds of content like market vlogs and studio vlogs and behind the scenes tutorials, which is basically what we're doing here today. I want to share with you all of my knowledge about making enamel pins. My motivation for doing so, however, is not 100% selfless. I did want to take the opportunity to celebrate here that I am currently running a pre-order crowdfunding campaign for four new pin designs. If you like space, if you like cute stuff, then these are the pins for you. You can pop on over to the link in the description if you would like to pledge to get yours for a discounted pre-order price. We are already 100% funded, so the pins are happening. It's just a matter of grabbing them now for that discounted price while they're hot. <laughs> But moving on from there, let's focus on what this video is all about, me sharing some of my knowledge here with you. In this video, we're gonna go over not only design tips, but as well how to find and deal with manufacturers, basically going from beginning to end in the process. Whether you are brand new to designing enamel pins and ordering from companies abroad, or you're just kind of interested in seeing what my tips might be that you can steal from or borrow from for your own process, I hope you will find this edutaining. <laughs> First thing we're going to talk about is enamel pins themselves. Now these have been around for a long time. They have been accessible to small businesses like myself and perhaps yourself for probably a little over a decade now, maybe 12 years. And in my opinion, their lasting power as a product is very strong. I have predicted that the enamel pin bubble would pop again and again, and I've been wrong every time. So don't feel like it's too late to approach this kind of product in your small business catalog. And nowadays more than ever, there are more options to kind of like bring up the luxury or the specialness of your design. And we're gonna go all over those now. Let's start with the basics. The first thing that you need to understand is there are two main types of enamel pins. There are soft enamel pins and hard enamel pins. You can see from these pins what the difference is. With the soft enamel, you end up with kind of a beveled, sunken enamel fill, whereas with the hard enamel, you get a clean line across evenly across the top of your enamel pin. I would say that there are pros and cons to both different types of designs, but I wanted to also introduce a third slash 2.0 of the soft enamel pin, which is soft enamel with epoxy fill, which is personally my favorite technique to use. When you are coming up with your design for your enamel pin, one of the most important things to think about is that your line work is not necessarily going to be able to be black in your enamel pin design. If you decide to go with a hard enamel design, you will be subject to metal plating limitations, which is basically to say that there are a few different types of metals that you can use as the base for your pin. So when you're creating your design, it's important to keep in mind that if you're going to have gold metal plating, your colors should appear contrasty and well matched to that gold gold tone. However, when it comes to soft enamel pins, there's actually another strategy that you can use, and this is one of the reasons why I love soft enamel pins. With soft enamel, you can coat the metal itself with enamel, and basically, the sky is the limit for the color of the metal on your pin. I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea why you can't do it on hard enamel and you can only do it on soft enamel, but them's the rules, so we work with what we got. <laughs> another technique that is one of my favorites to use in enamel pin design is something called silk screening or screen printing on top of your enamel pin. With a traditional enamel pin design, you basically need to create bordered off wells in your illustration for each delineation of poured enamel into each hole. My goodness, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but with screen printing, you're able to apply lineless areas of color on top of the finished pin, and it takes away that limitation completely, which is very exciting as someone who likes to play with both lined and lineless styles. In almost all of my enamel pin designs, I will employ this dyed metal and screen print wombo combo because I feel like I end up matching my personal art style the closest with these techniques. These are not the only special techniques that you can use when designing your enamel pin. You can also have areas that are cut out. You can get glow in the dark or glitter enamel fill. You can have rhinestones applied. You can have a back stamp. You can actually have printing on the back of your pin. You can also get special designed post backings, usually of the rubber variety to kind of match the aesthetic that you're going for. It takes some trial and error to understand what the limitations of design within the pin actually can be. I would say that using the least detail possible to get your point across is probably
probably the way to go. At the end of the day, we're dealing with extremely small scale illustrations, so you don't want to cram in too much that makes the eye too busy, or maybe that won't even be legible from a distance. One way to double check your design as you go is to observe it at real size. You can either do that by scaling your digital software to what, like, hold up a ruler to the screen and you'll be able to see if it's one inch tall, you can just scale it to the one inch, or you can print out your design, cut it out, and then look at it from that actual physical scale. I think this can just help you get a really good sense of what's working and what isn't, any changes that have to be made, and so on. I'm actually going to walk you through my designs for this enamel pin pre-order that I'm running, tell you a little bit about why I'm making the decisions that I'm making, and then show you how I take that design from illustration to pin ready design. <laughs> You'll watch me working on these in the background, but the main thing that I wanted to explain here is the cost of your enamel pin will vary based on the number of colors and variables that are included in your design, not to mention the size. So whenever I'm designing an enamel pin, I try to keep my palette as limited as possible. And here you can see where the black fill areas are. Those are the parts that I want to be metal and all of the white areas will be the parts that will be filled with enamel. Once I've selected my color palette, which I play around with a lot for this particular design because it's the first one that I did, I can apply my screen print areas. So for example, I Heart Earth and all of the little colored details that don't have lines, those will be my screen print areas. The process is the same here for the second design, and I'm working with raster right now, which there's raster and there's vector, we'll go into that more in a moment, and creating my illustration with my tablet, hand drawing it in Clip Studio Paint, and afterwards I will convert it to a vector which is the format that's necessary for the pin production itself. You can see me play around a little bit with exactly how I want the overlaid screen print areas to translate but each different color screen and each different color enamel fill is going to add cost to the pins so something to keep in mind when you're working on your design. Now I hope that longtime viewers can find it in their heart to forgive me for reusing some footage from a previous video. Right now I am converting my raster line work, the part that will be the metal of the pin, into a vector. And I do this very simply in a program called Inkscape. It is free. You basically just load in your black and white PNG and then you use a specific function called trace bitmap and it will basically turn your raster image into vector line work. From there you can tweak the vector points to kind of like round out any edges that kind of got weird bumps, something like that. Now you can actually just submit your line work to your manufacturer and they can do this step for you, but in that you relinquish a little bit of control. Sometimes they won't be quite as neat and tidy with the translation as you might want to be, so I do recommend learning how to do this, downloading the program. It is remarkably easy and kind of fun if you've never done anything vector before. Up next, we are choosing our Pantone colors. This is the color code system that is used for this type of material. It is called the Solid Coded System, and I found this weird, like, like PDF online. I think if you look up Pantone solid coated colors, something like that through a Google search, you can find this or something similar. And from there, I grab all of the swatches for the colors that I want to use and fill them in in a demo to kind of like show off to the manufacturer exactly what I want the final product to look like. One thing also to keep in mind about this is that the colors that you'll see on the screen are very much not the colors that you're actually going to get in real life. Unfortunately, there are limitations for like screen color and print color. I would say that one of the things you can be guaranteed is that your colors will not be as like punchy and vibrant and oftentimes they're going to skew a little bit darker. So when you're selecting your colors, that's my recommendation to pitch up a little bit and to saturate a little bit more than you might ordinarily, but it's really fun to try and get it to work. You can actually purchase from Pantone a swatch book that has the most true representation of the colors in it, but that thing is very expensive. I want to say it's like multiple hundreds of dollars because it's specifically for industry people, stuff like that. So you just better off to uh, try it out with the with the digital version here. And something you can do is you can talk to other creators who have made enamel pins and be like, hey, do you know what color that Pantone is that you use for your pin? Because I really like it and I think it would be perfect for my project. So anyway, put together your little docket, get it ready to send off to the manufacturer, it'll be great. 
Now that your designs are complete and ready to go, you might be thinking, wow, it's going to be so difficult and confusing and overwhelming to find a manufacturer, and I am here to reassure you that it is not nearly that scary. The first thing you want to know about enamel pin manufacturing is that all enamel pins are made outside of North America, so if you find a supplier and they're claiming to be made in USA or something like that, this is not true. It is not legal to make enamel pins in North America. Those businesses are what are called middlemen, and sometimes these are not the choice that you want to make because they are marking up the cost of the pins and taking a little bit of a cut from your order. But on the other hand, they are the ones doing the coordinating with the manufacturers in China. And so if you are intimidated by the idea of communicating with people who may not speak English as a first language, this can be a good option and sometimes they can give you feedback on your design as well. So I'm not shaming anybody who wants to use a middleman for production, but in this day and age, it's pretty easy to go straight to the source to a manufacturer themselves. The main places that you want to go to find a manufacturer are Alibaba or Instagram. Alibaba is basically an online marketplace that connects designers with manufacturers. You can basically find manufacturers for literally anything you could think of wanting to make. The whole thing is a little bit overwhelming. I just use it to reach out, get quotes, and hopefully find a connection. But I actually found my enamel pin manufacturer through Instagram. These days they do a lot of social media marketing, which even includes outreach to creators. So if you are posting designs and you are using the hashtag enamel pin or something like that, you will often find that they will slide into the DMs with a quick like, hey, you want to make pins? We can help you do that. At this point, I even get tons of cold emails for this sort of thing. So a lot of the time, these people are going to find you. And when deciding who you want to work with, the best thing you can do is basically ask for quotes, ask for example photos of previous work, and find somebody whose communication style you feel like you jive with. In order to open up the line of communication, communication, you're just going to want to send an email for a quote. To give you a sense of what to include in this opening email, what size do you want your pin to be, what style of pin do you want to order, how many colors are included, and any information about fancy details like screen printing, what metal plating you want, how many backing posts you want, and even where you want them to be on the back. Plus, if you'd like to have a specific type of stopper, like the classic pinch clasp or a rubber backing, how many you plan on ordering. And keep in mind that there's usually a minimum per mold of about 50 units of a design. And if you'd like any packaging done in-house for your pins, I've never done anything like that before, but I think it is something some manufacturers offer. However, the majority of enamel pins will arrive to you with each little pin in a tiny plastic bag. It is very unfortunate, but when the pins are being shipped to you in bulk, there's a super high risk of them scratching each other, especially if you have stuff like screen print on top of your design. So unfortunately, these little bags are integral to protecting your pins. Remember, it's okay to do a little bit of shopping around before you do decide on who you want to work with. You can send this quote email to a few different manufacturers and see what you hear back. And something that I want you to keep in mind when you're opening the door to communication with manufacturers overseas is that the communication style can be different than maybe what you're used to. I do find often that they can be quite pushy in terms of trying to make a sale. And when you're trying to get information or negotiate, it's best to be clear, don't be flowery, don't be wishy-washy in your statements. Never make any assumptions about how things may or may not go. Just just ask questions and try and get as much clarity from the person you're communicating with as you can. And remember to be polite because they're a person too. They're working a job, you're working a job. And if you can build up trust with your supplier, you're going to have a much better experience coming back again and again to order new items. I think that there is also a level of concern for manufacturers duplicating or reprinting your designs without your permission. This is not something that I've experienced with my manufacturer and I can't give you advice as to how to avoid those kinds of manufacturers, but basically if you're getting any kind of like gut feeling not to go with a particular menu, just don't move on, it's okay. You will probably get a bunch of follow-up emails, but just be like, no, I'm not interested, and they'll stop. <laughs> Once you have landed on a supplier that you'd like to use, I want to let you know what to expect when placing your order and receiving your order. When you receive your quote from your supplier, you will be expected to pay that invoice 100% upfront. You will be paying for shipping, unit cost, and often a PayPal fee as well. <laughs> Sometimes when you get your initial quote, it's not going to include the shipping and fees on top of that. So definitely budget to expect that to be a pretty large number because usually the pins are sent from over overseas via UPS, DHL, or FedEx. Once your bill is paid, production will begin. The first thing you'll receive is a mock-up of your design with all of the details for your confirmation. And one thing that I want you to know is that if you do not request samples, photographs,
photographs mid production, you will not hear anything from your manufacturer until the pins have been shipped. So be sure to communicate upfront that you do want those progress photos and follow up if need be, if you haven't heard in a week or so from your contact. Like I mentioned, once the pins are complete, which is usually around two to four weeks, depending on the backup at the manufacturing, place. I could just retake that and say manufacturer, but I'm going to, I'm going to roll with it this time. Your package will be shipped via a courier, which will take probably no more than a week to arrive with you, but it will have to clear customs. And every once in a while, customs, customs is having a bad day and decides to put your box in the pile that says, please hold and go through this box and take an extra month to uh, check it out. When your package arrives, you can expect to pay a duty on the package. This is an additional fee that goes to the shipping company directly to deal with the importation costs and their fees regarding that. But once the box is with you, you've got your pins, you've received your wonderful package. Once you have received your package, there are two more steps before they are going to be ready to sell. The first thing is going through and checking your pins. It is to be expected when you receive your enamel pins that there will be some in the package that are not 100% up to snuff. This can include things like minor miss pores in the enamel, maybe a scratch. So now is the time to go through and do what is called pin grading, where you decide on, I would say, two or three tiers for your pins. First one is obviously A grade. These are ones that you feel comfortable selling at full price to your customers. The next one would be B grades. These are ones that are just, just a little bit off that you just wouldn't feel 100% comfortable selling at full price. And then an optional but unfortunate third tier is the C grade or mm, this is not this is not cool grade, <laughs> where you wouldn't even really feel comfortable selling them at all. With my manufacturer, I would say that I get about a 20% B grade or lower rate. So keep this in mind when you are purchasing stock. For example, if you have done some sort of pre-order campaign and you need to fulfill the orders for the people who have already paid for the item, you wanna make sure that you do have enough of that item in an A grade. So always over order a little bit, I would say. By and large, customers are not bothered by B grades. This is like a creator thing that you wanna have pride and make sure that your work looks perfect. I generally sell my B grades in person so that like people can select them and look at them and kind of consent to receiving one that isn't quite as perfect as like an example photo on an online shop might be. And they can also be fun for blind bags, stuff like that, where you can clear out some of your imperfect inventory at a reduced price and create a little bit of buzz because people love grab bags, let me tell you. Once your pins are graded, it is time to think about packaging. Um, I am of the opinion that less is more when it comes to packaging. I do really love and appreciate an over the top packaging experience that is very professional and luxurious, but I'm also trying to be as waste conscious as I possibly can when it comes to my own products. So there's basically two ways that I will present an enamel pin. I will either design a backing card that I will either have printed on a business card style print setting, I guess, which is just to say I go to where I buy my business cards and I'm like buying a business card, but it's actually the backing card for the pin, if that makes sense. But usually what I actually do is print them off on my printer at home on some cardstock, and I'll either do a backing card where I'll take the pin off and pluck it on, or I'll create kind of like a fold over top that I will staple onto the little plastic bag that the pin comes in because it's basically packaging, right? Things that you want to include on your packaging is your website or your social media handle. This is like, don't forget to do that because when someone buys it from you, they're not going to remember where it came from if it doesn't have some form of branding on it. And I think a lot of people do take pride in designing a fun backing card that kind of complements the design of the enamel pin, but I got a lot on my plate and so I just try and keep it simple. <laughs> don't necessarily feel like there's an expectation to create something perfect because at the end of the day, whatever you add to the pin is going to get tossed in the trash because the, the pin is what they paid for. All right, everybody, I think I went through everything that I wanted to share with you about enamel pins, but I'm starting to feel like maybe I've forgotten something. So if you do have any further questions, please drop them down below. I will do my best to answer them there in the comments. And if I need to make a follow up video, 100% I will. I am now going to remind you again to please go check out my pin pre order over on backer kit. It's going to be running for another two point something weeks from the launch date of this video. I'm really excited about these designs. It's hard for me to choose a favorite. I do suspect that the cat being abducted is going to be the most popular because cats are just 
OP, frankly. But my personal favorite is my little alien buddy who I just can't stop drawing, and I really think he needs a name, so feel free to leave a comment with a name suggestion for our little alien friend here. But before I split, I just wanted to take one moment to thank all of my patrons over on Patreon in my snack pack. These guys are the ones who are making it so I can make these videos for you week after week. They are pledging for a dollar to get behind the scenes content like videos, podcasts, and access to my Discord and secret shop. Some of them are pledging at 10 or $25 to get mailable rewards every single month. Starting tomorrow, April 1st, we are going into the next cycle, which is going to be a space themed to go along with the enamel pins set. So get excited for the reveal tomorrow for that. And of course you get a wonderful shout out here in the credits of the YouTube video that, you know, maybe people have already tabbed down and aren't watching anymore, but if you are, you're a real one. I hope you'll consider backing my pin pre-order or perhaps joining these wonderful people here on this list. But of course I understand we can't support every creator we love online, so I do just want to thank you for making it to the end of this video, for liking, for subscribing, and for joining me here again next Sunday. Stay sparkly, don't let the cruel world dull your shine, and I will see you next time.